Icicle in live performance. It's Tori Amos. I'm Chris Doritas, and it's so good to see you. Hi. So good to have you. This is from uh, from uh, Under the Pink. Yes. Yes. <laughs> this is from Under the Pink. It takes me a minute to remember. Yeah. Where they're all from. It's it's got a it, it adds up. You know, I was looking over the the discography and just the history of what you've been doing since I first came across you know Little Earthquakes and it's quite astounding. There's a lot of records. There's six full albums and then there's just all these EPs. Well, have... I have to take uh, D H A Neuromans just to remember <laughs> <laughs> because you know it's hard to remember sometimes. Harder to remember the lyrics and the music just because music has a different kind of imprint I think on you. Ah, but um, it comes out of your fingers, and I don't, you know, I don't know, but I do know that, and you can change it. Whereas the words are a little different; they're kind of indelible, and they need to be pretty much held true. Sometimes we throw something in, or a he said, she said, or this, that, or something, or a different bridge. But you kind of need to stay right. true to that. Whereas with the music, sometimes I think variations are fresh. The words are the tether, and. And the music, you can kind of swing yeah. it around that. Huh? I think so, yeah. You're, you're actually embarking on a pretty massive tour here. I mean, you're here in London rehearsing for a show that's tomorrow night at the Union Chapel. That's something you've been doing for a long time, right? You, you've been singing weddings in churches. Weddings and funerals, yeah. I did weddings um, <laughs> first, and then I graduated to funerals. I like funerals better, though. No, I'm talking about when you were like a little girl. Like, yeah, that's what I mean. Really? My dad had me working. See, I was cheaper than the organist. So he could pay less <laughs> if he got me working than if he had to hire a pro. And um, I was about 10, 9 or 10. Uh. And weddings were pretty lucrative. So your dad got your, your, your start in, in music. He got you I started guess, in the business. paying, <laughs> yeah. Getting paid. Mm. And then... Um, Again, like I said, funerals, though, were the real... So what were you singing? Ones. Were you singing religious material? You were singing... No. No, people getting married in the 70s didn't want religious material. But the great thing is when I did funerals, I didn't have to sing We've Only Just Begun. <laughs> so that was good. I look forward That's to that. That's what you were singing was We've Only Just Begun? For weddings, yeah. Paul Williams? And... Yeah. Very wow. big request. Evergreen. Oh, yeah. Big one. Maybe you can do that for us here. To, yeah. To <laughs> Maybe not. Uh, well, it's interesting to me also that, you know, there's always been a lot of religious iconography in your music. Your father, as you just pointed out, was a Methodist minister, right? Yep. Um, Dr. Edison Amos. Yes. Uh, uh, and, uh, <laughs> you know, it, it makes me think of... Um, well, Crucify was one song in particular that I'm thinking of. And it was the Crucify EP that you had all these covers on there. You did the Nirvana, Smells Like Teen Spirit, and, and Led Zeppelin's Thank You, right? And Angie. And Angie, yeah, which I thought were, were great versions. And, and that kept coming into my mind as I listened to the new album, which, you know, which is uh, a collection of covers. Bye, guys. Bye, guys. <laughs> Right? So, I mean, it, it, it almost feels like an extension of what, of what you were sort of investigating back then with the Crucify EP. And yeah, I've been fiddling for a while with that. I think this one became more of a... Um, there were a couple themes that uh, started out with the project. One was how men say things and what a woman hears. Mm. And so certain songs had to follow a certain... Criteria. I mean, they had to rise right. up to the to the idea, or they couldn't really be included, even so, if I liked them. So the concept was going into it that you wanted to uh, illuminate the material of these songs from the point of view of the woman. Yes, that was the subject of the songs. Mm. And and was there one song that you sort of built the concept out of that? Well, obviously, the Bonnie and Clyde song does that to a T because. Mm. Um, this is the Eminem song. The Eminem song, yeah. You know, he wrote a really powerful song on domestic violence, and the character he chose to align with wasn't who I was aligning with. And immediately when I heard it, she just reached out of that trunk of the car and said, you know, there's, there's another way to hear this. Mm. And so I think songs are... 
like little myths. And mythology has been something I've always been drawn to. Well, you actually, from what I understand, for the M&M recording, you had a box built that you yeah, could be they, in? Yeah, they built a space, a confining space, so that I couldn't move in it. Wow. And uh, so I just felt like it was really important. You know, this one was a tricky one just because um, my desire was that our version would be happening almost exactly at the same time as he's telling his little girl the story. Because the whole point is that you're hearing her hear him tell her daughter lies and making the daughter an accomplice. 97 Bonnie and Clyde, that's uh, Tori Amos from the album Strange Little Girls, brand new. And it's an Eminem song. I'm Chris Doritas. Tori Amos is with us here in studio. Uh, you know, some people are hearing this and saying, my God, why? Why would you? That's a horrifying portrait, a horrifying, you know, episode. Obviously, you respect Eminem as a storyteller. Uh, Otherwise, why? I, 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 let's say this. I think he wrote a very strong song, Bonnie and Clyde. He wrote a very strong song mm. that depicts domestic violence because, you know, I picked the wordsmiths. I picked the powerhouses. There's no question about that. I don't know these men. Mm. So respect is a very tricky word because I, 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 don't, I don't give that lightly. Um, you know, I don't know unless I knew somebody how I would feel about them. So, mm. you know, I reserve judgment. But if somebody is a misogynist or somebody thinks women should be subjugated, I'm probably not going to have a whole lot to say to them where they think gays should be subjugated or that, you know, I probably won't have a lot in common. Mm. But that is not what this record is about. This is about um, crawling behind the eyes of men. This is about when you take a man's word, you take his seed. When you take a woman's word, you don't take it. Our word hasn't meant anything until maybe the last century, unless you were Queen Elizabeth I or Cleopatra. Let's be honest, a woman's word didn't mean a whole lot. We had to have our fathers to vouch for us. Yeah. That's what mattered. I'm Chris Doritas. Tori Amos is with us in studio. We're hearing some songs in live performance. We're, we're actually in uh, Depot Studios, a rehearsal studio in the north of London. Now, you've peppered the set with some older songs, songs that I, I guess in some way fit with the new album, Strange Little Girls. This one goes back to 1999 from To Venus and Back. Yes. Yeah. One reason that this is kind of surfacing right now is it does have that religious tie-in and it does have that, you know, the question of the blood, the sacred blood, and there's raining blood by Slayer on the record, which, you know, I just didn't find Satan in that song. I found this beautiful big vagina raining over Afghanistan or whatever country that, um, you know... Subjugates women. Yeah, and parts of America. Huh. Tori Amos is with us. I'm Chris Doritas. We're hearing a live performance. It's called Lust. That's Tori Amos in live performance. You can find the original version on the album To Venus and Back. There's a new album from Tori Amos. It's called Strange Little Girls, due in stores the 18th of uh, September in the States. And then there's a tour that starts in West Palm Beach the 28th of September. It goes through San Francisco, November 21st, I think. We're hearing a performance from the um, Depot Studios, north of London. I'm sitting here in front of your Bosendorfer. I mean, this is, this is the piano you don't go anywhere without. Yes. She's my dear friend. So is this the one you're going to take on the road with you? Yep. So there she aren't, there aren't the several of these? There are a couple of these, but she, her friend lives in Florida, and she doesn't go anywhere. <laughs> her friend just likes the beach and doesn't do well with temperature change. Oh, Has say, a really have, hard time. Do you have names for these pianos? No, just... Her. <laughs> she. <laughs> okay. So you're living in, uh, in southwest England these days, right? Yeah. In Cornwall? Most of the time, yes. Your husband's British. Yes, right? he is. He's very British. 
Is that the reason to settle in England because of, of Mark Hawley? Because he is very uncompromising and he's listening to everything we're saying because, of course, he's taping this. But um, um, I'm a much better traveler than he is. And he gets very grumpy uh -huh. if he's away from um, Arsenal for too long. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, um, we, we, we compromise. Well, uh, y you know, I, I have to ask the question. I mean, whenever there's like a... You see an, an album, a collection of covers come along. You know, it sort of makes you go, "Okay, is that, was there was there a writer's block, or was it was it inspired by the concept initially, and that's what you ran with, or was you know sometimes you'll see people." Do well, let's face it, a lot of cover albums suck. So you know, you have to make your own decision if this is a powerful work or not, and then you'll decide when you hear my next work if I did have a writer's block. <laughs> and I just kind of. I was drawn to a few um, lines of thought, and I, I really wanted to do something where I was more, mm, it was about perspective. Mm. You know, I've had a war with the patriarchy for a long, long time. Yeah. I really don't want to continue the war. However, there has been a lot of, um, you know, real meanness from some heterosexual men against women and gay men, and there are a lot of them, in the West particularly. Um, and so whatever this kind of malice is, instead of, um, I think sometimes to be an activist, you have to infiltrate. And I also believe that, you know, you go to the poison to get the antidote. Simple stuff, we all know that. Do you think that that war with the patriarchy, as you said it, uh, has been fueled even more by the fact that you have a daughter now and thinking about the world through her eyes? Sure. Especially when you hear, when I would hear just some of the stuff about women, you just go, oh my God, I don't know the girls that some of these people know, but it, if that isn't the problem that they have, then it did strike me that before, you know, I do have a, um, what would you say, a, a little survival kit as a woman, and sometimes I'm maybe more callous and cold-hearted than um, an 11-month-old. But when I looked at my, my daughter, I realized, you know, she's going to grow up. And if you would have asked me in 1968 what I thought the New Age was going to be when New Age by the Velvets Velvet came out, yeah. I would not have thought that we... With all the strides we were making then, and I remember it very well, I was five, I was at the Peabody Conservatory, and I remember this openness, free quality, not this anti-freedom movement that seems to be everywhere. So, yeah, it was a time where in 2001, my picture of the New Age in 1968 wouldn't have been this. Mm. Tori Amos is with us here at Ground Zero. I'm Chris Doritas, and there is a new album. It's called Strange Little Girls. It's out in uh, the States, September 18th. We're hearing a live performance here in studio. And this one uh, is another old one. This one goes to, back to a B-side, um, Take to the Sky. Even though they're B-sides, I have to tell you, I think I like the B-sides more than I like the other songs. And I don't know if it's because I've played the other one so many times. <laughs> or I have this weird thing where I really do like the B-sides best. And um, because maybe it's I like the children you want to give a little more nurturing to. Maybe, <laughs> or maybe I didn't put on the on the record because you want to. I don't know. Keep them private. I don't know. Mm. I haven't. I don't know that, but I do know that I like them. Mm. Tori Amos in live performance. I'm Chris Doritas, joined by Tori Amos, who is with us in studio. We're hearing tracks from the new album, Strange Little Girls, a collection of covers by Tori Amos of songs written by various men. Um, there's one on here from, from John Lennon. It's Happiness is a Warm Gun. Now, is that your father that's at the front of this? Yeah. You've got father and daughter and father and son. So you have, um, you know, Dr. Edison Amos, my dad, talking about the Second Amendment. And then you have George... Senior and George Junior, doing George their, Bush, yeah, senior. The, the Bushes. Mm. Yeah. Wow. So um, I thought if I'm going to do father and son, it was fair to do father and daughter. <laughs> and um, this is this song is has a little thread going to the one before it on the record, which is I don't like Mondays. 
And um, one of the brain trust of men called me up and said after the shooting in San Diego, that happened this year, mm. um, you know, you, you have to do I don't like Mondays. And I said, you know, fair point. And as I was... Because uh, that's actually a song about a, another shooting in San Diego from the 70s? That Bob Geldof was commenting on yeah. y- years and years ago. Mm. And um, the fact that it, it's still going on, that it's resonating still now, um, that and happiness started to really kind of become a couplet together. Um, I was watching a a lot of the commentary at the time after the shooting, and the thing that struck me was different people from the gun lobby or the NRA would would say things to the effect of, or I'd read it on the net, um, you know, these are bad seeds that do this kind of thing. And it was almost as if they were absolving themselves, because we all know that, that the issue is accessibility. And with all my nieces and nephews, the chip is going to slip. It did with me. It's gonna. So the last thing you want is that they can pick up a thirty-eight caliber gun. That's the last thing that you want. You mean your your nieces and nephews might be victims of violence? No. Their it- chip's gonna slip, meaning they lose it. We all have had moments when we get angry. Oh, I see what you're saying. Okay. And, you know, they throw watermelons. Because that's, that's what's what they, around. That's what's around. <laughs> and so when, when those, those guys in power, or women, did not want to say, hey, that it's easier to get a gun than a driver's license in some states, that, that's really kind of not good. And, and we have to really look at this. So happiness became a canvas um, for the Second Amendment written by a man who was killed by a gun, who when he saw this said, you know, just... <laughs> couldn't believe it why you know why is it warm because it's just been fired um so i felt like yeah this this needs to be put on this record then i think what i'll do is as i'll put those together um we'll start off with i don't like mondays and then we'll uh, head into happiness is a warm gun both coming from strange little girls from the new album by tori amos and uh why? I mean, I know there's a song, Strange Little Girl, on the album, but why characterize these, these women as, as strange little girls? Well, because you probably don't know this, but I always call my songs the girls. And these are strange ones? Strange yes. songs, you mean? Strange ones. Strange girls. The men are the mothers on this record. The men are the mothers. The writers? The writers, yeah. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. For the, for the live performance. And best of luck with it. Two from Tori Amos, Happiness is a Warm Gun, and I Don't Like Mondays. Both coming from Strange Little Girls for brand new release. Again, my thanks to Tori Amos for joining us. Also, we had help on the show from Janet Stampler, Nikki Slight, John Sirachi, our production assistant, is James Combs. The technical producer is Scott Fritz. The executive producer is Gemma Dempsey. I'm Chris Doritas. You know, uh, I started doing this show, Ground Zero, this Saturday afternoon show on KCRW almost exactly a year ago when we launched with Madonna as special guest on October 9th. And now with the events of last week so etched in our minds and the words Ground Zero taking on a whole new horrific meaning in our minds, I've decided to change the name of the show and to what I'm, I'm, I'm still not sure. I still don't know. But, uh, hey, if you have any thoughts on what uh, we might call the show, I'm certainly open to uh, hear your suggestions. And any other comments you might have, you can email us at groundzero at spinner.com. And I, uh, I look forward to your, to your comments and your ideas. I'm Chris Doritas. Next week on the show, Chris Blackwell, his special guest. This program is a co-production of the Radio Ad Network and KCRW Santa Monica.